Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we're joined by Bill Flipper. We're going to be doing an interview and letting me hear his story. Bill has been reselling in some form or another for almost 30 years, so he's going to be able to give you a wide depth of experience, and I'm super excited for this interview. So yeah, Bill, thanks for joining us. If you want to kind of just start off and introduce yourself to the audience. I'm Bill Flipper. I started a YouTube channel about eight weeks ago. I'm also on Instagram. I'm not very active. I'm trying to get better with that. Um, and I do almost daily live sourcing of OA and talk about Amazon content and uh, uh, some eBay and Mercari too, items to look out for, bolos, those types of things. Awesome. So, Bill, before we uh, started this, you told me that you got started out reselling on eBay pretty much at the inception. So can you tell us a little bit more that, about that and how you got started? Um, my... Uh, my dad was like an antique dealer. So my mother, so we always had like collectibles and things in the house and they encouraged me to collect. And I always enjoyed comic books as a kid and enjoyed reading them. So um, I, I don't know how I found eBay, but this is like I said, almost this is before it was even a publicly traded stock. So I don't know if it was 98, 99, this is extreme. We would actually send money orders and, uh, you would send money orders. They didn't have PayPal. It, it probably sounds crazy to many people, but, and sometimes the money orders would be fake. I mean, it, it was a, uh, really the early times and I would buy comic books and sell them and sell collectibles. And the, it was, uh, it was looking back on, it was really early. And, uh, I always wish I'd buy, it was before the tech blast of 2001 mm -hmm. where like pet.com was like a billion dollar company and didn't sell any items. eBay was like, I think it opened for 30 and like ran to a hundred. I was like, man, I should have bought the stock because I, it was a company I used, you know, it was yeah. a company I used. Super cool. So you're definitely an OG in the reselling game. <laughs> I, I guess so. Yeah. But my dad always encouraged that and saying like, listen, you can buy this item today for 20 and sell it next week for a hundred. And he was an auctioneer. So, you know, it's like, that makes more sense than buying a stock for $10 and yeah. hoping to sell it in three years for 15. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially with the the tools that we have today. I'm not super big into the stock market and people always ask me why. It's like, well, I don't have Kiva for the stock market. You know, sure, I, sure. I know the data and I know that my returns are pretty much guaranteed rather than hoping in the stock market. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So fast forward to uh, Amazon now. Let's, let's really dive into that. You said you started selling in 2018 on Amazon? Yeah, it was approximately around then. I was working as like an administrative assistant for someone in the medical supply industry. And he was he's probably one of the most successful people I know uh, as reselling like diabetic supplies and stuff. And I would always come to him with these crazy ideas, like not not crazy ideas, but like business ideas that were not. You know what I'm trying to say? And yeah. he's like, Bill, all you need to do is buy a product and resell it. Amazon is huge. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need all affiliate marketing or all these crazy things, buy a good product, resell it at margin, keep the margin, buy more. And uh, yeah. he encouraged me to start the Amazon account and he ended up firing me. So I wow. was like, okay, I got our employment. I went all in on that. And uh, you know, so that it just started and I started scanning books. I saw the Reezy videos, the first sale I ever made, I bought a book for a dollar and resold for 50. Awesome. So it was like a 35 X on the money. And I was That's like, crazy. okay, this could work. <laughs> yeah. Like this books could are work. crazy. The, the, the absolute insane ROI that you can get with books. Uh, that's why a lot of people start out with them, you know, cause a lot of people, when you're starting out, you're limited on capital. You don't have a sure. ton of money, but when you can get a 35 X return, your capital scales. Yeah. And it, it was the proof of concept. And it was, uh, I mean, now it's such a, I think it's great for a beginner. To do mm -hmm. that, do a couple book shipments, make more money, go to RA, buy some buy some Coles bras for four dollars, flip them for twenty. Shout out Coles and bras, then, <laughs> and then you can move to like, okay, I'm starting to be uncomfortable spending five hundred bucks a day on OA, yep. or slowly scaling in. Yep. I mean, I've just uh, I've had some great clearance hits. I can't think, but I, um, Coles had the fifty percent off sale, and I literally bought like a hundred bras. They were $44 bras. Some of them were marked down to $4. It's insane. Like, you can't lose there. <laughs> Guys, if you're listening, don't sleep on Cole's bras. Like that was such a big part of my business growth. And when I was really yeah. heavy retail arbitrage, 
what we would do is uh so we'd go to the clearance section where they'd have all these markdowns and then specifically what i would do is i'd wait until they had a mystery coupon come out and then sure. i'd go to ebay and buy 40 percent off coupons <laughs> so we'd get 40 percent off the already like 80 percent off and then yeah. on top of that we were getting like 35 percent kohl's cash and then if you do it right you can also get like two three percent on a on a credit card it's insane. Yeah. There's so many layers of coupons uh, that you can stack at Kohl's. Yeah, yeah, totally. And um, it was just like those licks. I mean, that was like 700 bucks in like two hours. Yeah. And I'm sure you have the same advance. I mean, that's going to scale your and at four dollars a bra, you can make a mistake. Yep. Like it's not going to ruin you if you make a mistake. If I buy two hundred dollars or five hundred dollars in vitamins and Amazon, you know, I didn't read the keeper chart. Right. And now my five hundred bucks turned to two fifty plus the cost of the time, plus the cost of the yep. capital, it's harder to, uh, now I got to double my mind just to get back to even. So, yeah. Yeah. A lot of things, one thing that people don't think about as you scale is that risk factor. So like I always tell people when they're starting out, go to Dollar Tree because the items are literally a dollar. Now they're a little bit more. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're still relatively cheap. So you are going to make mistakes when you first start out, you're going to misread the keep up. You're not going to realize Amazon on the, is on the listing, whatever. You're going to make mistakes, and it's better to make that mistake on a dollar item than like $500 worth of vitamins, like you just said. Sure, sure. And I've had those. I mean, sometimes yeah. it's going through repricing. You're just like, it's 90 days. The the price isn't – I'm 20th in line on the repricer. This isn't coming back, mm -hmm. you know, so I just got to cut my losses, move on, learn from it. And, uh, you know, just just move on. You can see that. I love to show the keeper charts. You see that seller count just go up in three days mm -hmm. from t from 10 to 40. It's done. That listing done for a couple months. Get out. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, that's happened. yeah. Yes. So today, are you primarily online arbitrage then? Um, I would say 80 percent, 80 percent. I still like to go in the stores like I have a local supermarket around me that prints money. They do a um, buy one, get one free on vitamins. And I'll spend like 800 bucks there a month. And it just like, so I, I'm not going to, this too low hanging fruit. Yeah. Like I'm not going to just go there and not, and not do that. And Kohl's can be good. You know, you get the Kohl's cash, go yeah. in there, buy the Nike, the hoodies, the bras. And then it's again, low hanging fruit. That's just going to help me, but it doesn't scale very well. I live in a kind of like a suburban area. So it's not like a main place with 10 coals around me. We got one coals and to drive an hour away for another coals does not make sense. I got to drive an hour for my first coals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very rural here. So RA was definitely uh, really difficult for me to scale. I got it up to like 20, 25, maybe 30 K a month, but somewhere in that range. Uh, but it's really good beyond that. I had to switch to online arbitrage. Sure. Sure. Totally. That's you know, around Christmas, you can scale it a little bit better. I'll drive like, you know, like an hour to go to like 10 different Walmarts or five different because it makes sense. And there's so many bolos. There's so many items where you can, you know, you can spend five or ten thousand dollars a day. Normal seasonal stuff is just not going to happen in my experience. Yeah. Yeah. yeah same here. So uh, what does your online arbitrage business model look like? Are you doing all your sourcing? Do you have VAs? Let's break that down. I, I only, I source it myself. I have a huge, and I, like I said, I, I'm completely upfront with my numbers. I'm about 40 K this month. You know, I, I would say most OA is probably what, 10 to 14%. And yeah. I have a five-year-old son. I got primary custody, so I'm taking care of him. I'm a busy guy. And I don't think I'm, you know, I did a hundred K in December. So that was, that's a reasonable, that was okay. And, um, you know, right now I'm trying to expand on kind of helping people, teaching them. But um, I do all my own sourcing, manual reverse source, you know, like with the flash 25 percent Walgreens. I just, you know, maxed out every amount I could have on that. That was a few days ago. So it's my own sourcing. I try to look for the replans or, you know, a lot of times you can come back to that same item maybe a month yeah. or two from now once people. And there's I, like I, before we started, I was checking for a restock. I'm just like waiting for this item to come in to spend thousands of dollars on yeah. it. it, just prints. But, you know, and that's something I do. I encourage if you have a great item that's out of stock, check that every morning because I, I've had so many items. They're going out of stock like every two days. But when you catch them while they're in stock, you're going to print. Yep. So 
that's the things that other people won't do is just keep checking that restock. Yeah. hundred um, percent. But yeah, I do my own, my own. I don't have a VA. Maybe it's something I could look into. It's um, I think if I get one, I'm going to sit on them with hours and hours and teach them how to source. I think a lot of people I've been like talking to some of them about VAs and they're like, well, they're not doing well. And it's like, well, have you sat with them for hours with shared screen over and over your thought process on sourcing? But maybe it's just like a little bit of fear of giving up that control. I think that's a lot of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people do, they get VAs and then they complain because the VA isn't performing or meeting their standards, but then they, you look at it and they didn't take the time to invest in that VA. How can you expect someone to do well if you don't take the time to train them, invest in them and show them what you're actually expecting? And in my experience, a lot of virtual assistants already have experience working for past employers. So they'll know the baseline stuff, which is great. But at the end of the day, they don't know what you expect. Maybe in your business, you want a, a 30% return on, on investment, but their past employer was okay with like a 15 or something. So yeah. they're just used to that. And you need to be willing to spend the time, give them time to get up to par and what you're actually expecting. Yeah. It was just recently I was watching an Instagram live and they were like, well, I didn't really train them and they're not really working out. And it's like, well, there's your answer. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I, so I think I just did the time to sit down with one, but it's working very well now. So I need to, I don't know how much more I can scale. You know, my son's actually my priority. Mm -hmm. My business is secondary because it gives me the ability to take care of him and everything. But it, you know, am I willing to go 18 hour days and ignore him? No, I'm not. I wish I, you know, I mean, the good, you know, if I didn't have a kid, I would encourage people to do that really go in. I think everyone has different life goals. And yeah. some people is a million dollar cash flow business. Some's 10 million. And mine is, Hey, I don't want this kid to end up, you know what I mean? Going crazy or messed up. Yeah. I want to be there for him as a young. Yep. Yep. So. That's super important where whatever stage you're at in life, always make sure that you're monitoring what your goals are and making sure that your daily actions are mapping out uh, to that long-term goal. Cause you can look at like Amazon lit who's selling like 5 million sure. a month, but maybe you just want to make four or five grand a month so that you can spend time with your family and have the freedom to, to be with them. So don't compare yourselves to people who are pushing out way bigger numbers than you because they probably have different goals than you. And that's okay. As long as you are needing your goals and your expectations, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I'm t I totally agree. I encourage other people to, and maybe they want, if they want to go for 5 million a month, but just realize the work you're going to have to put in. Yep. You will have to sacrifice probably everything for multiple years. Yeah. And if not, that's okay too. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your YouTube. You said you launched about eight weeks ago. Is that right? I had put like one or two videos up over the, I think there's a couple of years old, but I never really tried. I just was, um, Hey, this is Scout IQ. Click my affiliate. It was just yeah. dumb. But, um, and then I was just, I started like one or two. And well, I was like, I'm going to stick with this. I saw other people having success. And I was like, you know, when I was younger, I kind of wanted to be a history teacher. So I do enjoy the teaching process. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to do these. And one of the videos got like 150 views in a week, which I thought was just unbelievable. Like people enjoyed it. So I got probably in the eight weeks, I got about 232 subscribers. I just keep putting out the content, trying to explain. I answer all the questions. If someone has a good question, I actually do a video on that. I'm like, okay, yep. well, you guys want to know variations? This is how I look at them. It's a pretty simple process. I encourage them. If you watch my video, pull up the ace and I'm looking at with Keepa to see exactly what I'm, and I, I'm working on now finally editing and doing thumbnails. I was just like freestyling it, but you know, I, I wanted to put out content almost daily. So Good. I would just push them out and I'm trying to learn the actual editing process now and do those yeah. types of things. One step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I w I'm always curious to hear people's motivation behind uh, putting out content because I think there there's like several layers to it. Like one, obviously it is beneficial to us long-term to be able to sure. monetize that stuff. But two, and probably more importantly, is you're able to have a positive impact on somebody's life. I was thinking about this like a week ago. I got started reselling on Amazon because I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw a video of Gary Vee. 
sure. talking about retail arbitrage flipping. And it's like, what if you, one of your videos could be that video for somebody else? What if your video could be what sets someone on a trajectory towards a better life, financially, freedom, whatever that looks like? So there's a, a lot of different layers there and just all around benefits to how you can help other people and help yourself too. Sure. And my plan is it's like, if I can help you make an extra 10,000 a year, what would you be willing to pay me? Well, probably, you know what I mean? So at one point I want to monetize it, but my mm -hmm. plan is first bring massive value, yeah, massive value, value. And then figure out the, the money will come. I'll figure out, I'll make the connections. I'll slowly do it. But the first step is to bring a year or two or a couple of years of massive value and then figure things out after that. Do you have any words of advice for someone who's looking to get started uh, reselling on Amazon? Um, my words of advice is get started. Um, I did actually a video on what I would do if I had to start from day one. Consume a ton of content. And then my personal advice, and people disagree with me on it, start with books. Go to RA, uh, uh, you know, bras and things like that, or uh, RA items. And then just slowly roll it up. Don't take any profit. Just keep snowballing and snowballing it. And you're going to have to work a job for a while unless you have another income. And you're, you know, you're not going to quit tomorrow. Someone asked me personally, they're like, how can I do what you do? I'm like, well, you need to work more hours at your job. Now, when you start, you need to do 18 hours a day, whether you have a family or not. You probably need to be listening to this stuff in the car. You need to be watching this stuff on your break. That, that's my advice. Mm -hmm. I mean, people can disagree with me, but I think if you want to get started and do this full time, you're going to have to act like you're already doing it full time. Yep. And there's so much good content out there on ungating and all these processes. When I started, I would just listen to Reezy and other people in the car. I would Shout just watch it all day. I would watch whatever was out there, read tons of blog posts. And I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. And yeah. the people who are going to do it, they don't even need this advice because they, an entrepreneur will yep. just figure it out. It's in them. They could, I could tell them, Hey, you won't make it. And they're like, yeah, okay. That This guy's wrong. I'm going to crush it. I'm going to figure this out because that's how I was. I was like, I'm going to get this. Other people are doing it. I'm seeing the bars. I'm seeing, you know, 30,000 a month, a hundred thousand a month. I can do this, you know? Yeah. hundred percent. It's a I different did. mentality. Yep. So, Bill, where can people find you on socials? Uh, the the I am pretty much only active on YouTube. I'm trying to do some Instagram, too, and just drive the traffic from there. So YouTube and Instagram. Awesome. So go check out Bill on YouTube and Instagram. He gave us some great advice today. So go check him out. And like he was saying, it's all about that mindset. So if that mindset he was describing is you, after this video, make sure you go and take action. Thank you guys for watching this interview. See you on the next one. Peace. Thank you.